Okay, so let's do this whole thing all over again, but in English. And since I haven't made a video like this in English for quite a while anymore, I have to explain a few things. First of all, I will pack photos and videos into one thing. You can use the time codes. For comparison's sake, I am using the OnePlus 7 Pro, just because that's the next best thing that I have. And this way you can see, well, how much has happened in about two years or roughly about that. And I actually have to tell you that I expected there to be a bigger difference, especially since this is a brand new phone that got quite a lot of hype. And therefore, I will have have to zoom in a lot and that is just because to show you these smaller little differences which you otherwise wouldn't be able to tell I would say the first thing that I want to show which is something that I actually didn't do in the last time is the camera apps because we have to talk a little bit about them first of all you have here the different modes so you have the wide angle you have the zoom and the normal one but for example in video once the video is running you can't switch this anymore you have to do it beforehand this is a minor inconvenience just as for example getting to the to the portrait mode if you want to make a selfie and now make a portrait mode, you have to go to modus and then portrait selfie and it actually feels like it's launching a different camera app, which is odd to see. And you don't really have a quick access where most of them just list them here. You have the last app, which you can use to get to that and get back. But there are a few things that are a little bit less convenient, especially if you go into the settings now. You only have the options for the photos. You have to go into the camera mode for video to see those options, which is a little bit odd. And then we don't have 4K60, even though the camera supports it. This is only available in the Cinema Pro app. Here we are limited to 4K30. We have stabilization and we have all those typical other settings, which we don't have to go into. For photos, we have, of course, the portrait mode or the kind of bokeh mode and all those kind of other options, which we don't have to go into. But I want to go into the Pro apps. We have the Photo Pro app. And this actually resembles the Sony cameras quite a lot with the different options here with different modes where you can switch between auto, you can just use auto. And if you use auto, by the way, then the results are pretty much exactly the same as you have with the normal camera app. But here you can switch between autofocus and where it kind of focuses on and you have a lot more options. But this takes quite a lot of time and yeah, you have to be a manual fan to get this. Same as for example, with the Cinema Pro app, you have the options to here use now 60 or 120 if you want to have um, slow motion you can change the resolution from 4k to 2.7k but you also have to change quite often the, pr the the project here for example we have the presets for different colors here we can switch and here now you have to ex ex create a new project so you can actually switch those different those different modes you can't use it because you have the free cameras but now since i'm using 60 frames i can't switch it then you have the option to use the iso you can use it in auto but this only sets it once it's not like permanently same also for the shutter so this is actually one thing that i have a little bit of an issue with because if you start recording now you can't do anything but change the focus you can set an a point if you want to go from one point smoothly to the other one but you can't change the iso or anything else so this is really for people that come along with patience so it's maybe not super kind of easy to get a few things around but let's actually look at the results and let me show you something okay the oneplus 7 pro is on the left the sony on the right and this is actually what i'm already talking about for such a long time if you look at them fully zoomed out at both they look nice and you don't really see a difference you see a little, something a little bit different in terms of colors maybe in brightness and so on exposure but just in terms of sheer quality we have to zoom in and even then the difference isn't as big as i thought because if you look at this yes we have definitely generally that's a thing on the oneplus 7 pro a little bit more saturation a little bit more contrast but what we also get which is not quite as visible here when something is very far apart and it gets like a, like an oil painting look, which looks a little bit odd. And it definitely t them tends to over sharpen, which the Sony doesn't. So it generally looks also a little bit softer, but the details are usually there. But in this picture, I have a hard time telling which one would be better. Colors are a little bit different, like I said, but general quality is pretty much the same. Also the next picture, just look at it. Not really a difference. Tiles look pretty much the same. Like I said, a little bit to blend the one uh, the, the sony this is for example also a thing if i would use for example instagram i could use the oneplus 7 pro pictures but usually i even use a filter there add some saturation or maybe something else but on the sony you pretty much have to do it because those pictures just aren't appealing if you want accurate ones absolutely then you can go for it because generally they tend to be a little bit more 
realistic. Here, major difference, the Sony is much sharper, but I also think I didn't get it quite right. Maybe I was moving a little bit with the OnePlus because otherwise it should be closer because you can see how close they are all the time usually throughout here. Obvious thing, contrast more on the OnePlus, a little bit more sharpness, but you don't really get much more. Maybe you lose some details here because it tries to put a little bit too much emphasis on the contrast, but if you look at the far back side, the tiles here are the same, the windows, the font here, from the wide angle they are pretty much identical besides obviously the coloration this is the normal picture sharpness also here pretty much the same you can see that the oneplus does some odd little things here some textures a little bit missing here the oil painting look again but generally from this distance yeah marginal if not even useless to talk about this also normal view yeah not much else to say Let's check dynamic range. Let's go into it. Clouds weren't there, but what you can see a little bit of some artifacting going on the OnePlus, which is something that I don't usually see. There you can see a little bit more details here on the roof compared to the OnePlus. If we look at the back here, OnePlus this time looks a little bit softer, but here, for example, there is a difference. Here, there are a few details missing, I would say, and it's a little bit too kind of grayed out where you can still see things on the OnePlus. The next picture, normal picture, nothing really else to tell. So I'm actually gonna skip a few because it's pretty much throughout the whole thing visible what's happening. More saturation, more contrast, a little bit over sharpening on the OnePlus, a little bit more realistic, but also a little bit sometimes pictures that lack, um, not really sharpness, but definitely contrast and a little bit saturation, but you have a little bit more uh, lean way to actually maybe fix that in post, especially if you maybe use RAW or something. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to show is this. If you look at this, it looks like it overexposed or clipped here quite a lot. But in reality, due to harsh sunlight, it actually did. But what most people would actually want to, I guess, would be to see those details. And the OnePlus definitely did it better on you. If you want it as it actually looked like, you, you take the Sony. But if you want to get those highlights back on the Sony, I think it's possible because they are just, yeah, gone. Unless you maybe used RAW. And then it depends on the rest what you mean. But if we go closer, this is definitely where the Sony has a little bit of an upper hand because here, for example, we zoom in, you definitely see more sharpness on the Sony, you see more details, you see more structure, and you actually see more bokeh already earlier in the background. So that is definitely quite nice to see here, for example, also. Wait. This one shows it pretty obvious of how much more sharpness, how much more details without actually over sharpening the Sony achieved with even a little bit more bokeh. So that's where it definitely shows yeah, a little bit of an improvement over yeah, almost two years. Normal picture, just so you can see a reference, if we check the sharpness here, both very, very similar, a little bit better in terms of the fonts here, but a little bit more structure, which looks a little bit fake, the old painting effect once again on the, the OnePlus. And if we take a look at the three times zoom, I mean, everyone, I guess, in this term would say the OnePlus did a better job because this looks very smooth. If you look at the textures, we have a little bit more actually contrast and saturation texture here on the Sony, but generally not a huge difference after all. And I didn't actually see that pigeon here. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's take a look at low light. The Sony actually doesn't have a low light mode, a dedicated one, but what it can do in the gallery, improve those pictures, and I'm going to show you how that looks like. But these are both in normal mode. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit better here, or sharpness in terms of also details on the Sony, in terms of the stones, pretty much the same. But here's the thing, the OnePlus, if you look at this picture and then the low light picture, here now gets definitely more structure in the leaves and also definitely in the stones where the Sony, due to just being able to use it in post with the gallery app, just does this. So it just brightens up the picture, but it doesn't change the details. It doesn't change the sharp sharpness, which the OnePlus does. And if you compare these, you can definitely see an improvement on the OnePlus, even though it looks a little bit fake if you look a little bit closer. The next thing here also, look at these two pictures, pretty similar if you use them normally. If you go a little bit closer, you see a few little more details on the Sony. And if you took a, take a look at the night mode, yeah, 
Sony overdid it with the post processing with the sharp. Because, I mean, it didn't go sharper. I mean, just brighter. But both look a little bit unrealistic. I actually like what they are doing, but normally because look at this, Sony, super dark. But this is how it actually looked like. I didn't see anything here. The OnePlus gets a little bit more details back in here and actually has better structure on the road, which is nice to see. If you go closer, it actually looks even better. But if you use, for example, now the, lo the low light mode on the OnePlus, the whole sky gets purple. There was no hint of purple. I don't know why the OnePlus does that and tries to achieve details in the background that just simply were invisible with the naked eye and I don't have to see those. And then look at the street. It completely loses structure. Where, if you just use this, this is actually a usable photo on the Sony because it just brightens it up. It makes it a little bit more pleasing. Okay, let's take a look at a few other pictures. Here are selfies. It's a typical selfie shooter. Don't expect anything particularly amazing here. Sharpness is fine. Colors look fine. Also a little bit bland, a little bit flat, but yeah, nothing we haven't seen like in two years. Then we have the bokeh mode for the main camera, which works a little bit odd because look at this picture. Colors are completely off from the original photo and it didn't even make a great job in terms of cutouts. So it didn't really get it everywhere, right? And in my opinion, this is not usable. Use the normal one and it's way, way nicer. Then another picture. Pretty nice. I mean, generally, it is a pretty nice shoot, especially if you want to maybe use the manual mode where you have more flexibility if you want to use it. But I always say if you use already a UI that looks like on a camera and you take longer to take a picture, then just take a camera with you. <laughs> okay, these are a few more selfies. Wide angle. Nice. And this is an issue that I noticed. If you go all uh, very close to an object, even though the autofocus actually ceased because there was a bug and it seized the object and it wanted to focus on it, it just couldn't focus on it. And I tried to tap on the display, it just simply didn't. And I have like 20 of those pictures. This is another leaf there, it worked out. Yeah, and this is the portrait mode on the front, forget it. The cutout is very bad, it's pretty much unusable in my opinion. But now I would say let's take a look at a few videos. This is 4K30 and what actually happened during this video or after this video, I made this in 4K30, changed something. I mean, I mean I'm not quite sure what exactly, maybe just the mode, but definitely not the resolution or the frame rate. And what it did, it switched to 1080p30. So I'm not sure. And if it didn't warn me or anything and all, and I actually made a, quite a couple of videos until I've noticed the issue. Yeah. But that's that. Let's take a look at the next one. This is 1080p 30. I, I actually ex expected it to be 4K 30. But here actually I have to say that the stabilization looks a little bit smoother. Just look at the, the whopping from the from the foot when I when I put it on the ground. It looks a little bit smoother, but the quality definitely doesn't look amazing. Not a lot of details, not really sharp. So if you go into 4K 30 now, it already got a little bit more detail and on. But now you can see when I'm going to walk, it feels a little bit abrupt. It feels a little bit hard. The whole moving should be smoother and other cameras do this better, especially also the main quality. It's nothing particularly amazing. It's not super sharp. It's not really stable, like I said. It's not really all that detailed. So this is a pretty typical camera, but we have seen this kind of quality already for a long time. This is now wide angle. I, I'm not a fan of that stabilization. It doesn't look like a gimbal at all. And I know Sony can do this because they did it already in the past. Normal one again. Yeah. I'm not sure. This is with the focus. I mean, you can't use the, the zoom, the zoom, the free time zoom. It's way too wobbly. And here is another picture. I mean, we had good weather. I, I think with this kind of weather, the video should have looked even better. But yeah, it is what it is. And then the front camera, all run, already once again, a little bit overexposed, a little bit flat, contrast is missing. Otherwise, colors look fine. But also the general issue, <laughs> 1080p 30 and like a lot of other phones, the crop is just way too heavy to be actually to use this like, for example, for maybe something like vlogging or so on. But yeah, that is that. Let me go back and tell you a few things that I've noticed throughout the whole review. 
If you go very close, like I said, the autofocus doesn't quite sometimes get it and you have no chance. Autofocus, no matter what, doesn't work out in these games. Then the portrait modus, you can't really access it quite as conveniently and forget that just because of the color, it's pretty bad anyway. So yeah, front camera, that that's nothing special. Free time zoom is good, but nothing more than nothing less. We have seen sometimes the OnePlus was actually better, sometimes the Sony was better, so neck to neck and this with an almost two year old phone. A little bit sad to see. Pictures get generally a little bit flat, a little bit less contrast, but they also tend to overexpose. Things that if you use the manual mode, and I know a lot of people were mentioned this, you can get it right, but it takes time and not everyone wants to do that. At least I don't. And if you actually take pictures generally, I've noticed that it takes its time. So the software is like on all <clears throat> those previous Sony phones, still pretty slow in terms of post-pressing. Once you want to take that picture, it just needs a little bit longer. Other than that, for video, like I said, it switched from 4K to, to 180 without a good reason. I didn't see it. Then the standard app does only use 4K 30 where you can access 4K 60 in the Pro app, which has stabilization but it actually looks worse than on the normal ones, which is also a little bit odd to see. Then the, the video stabilization itself, like I said, a little bit jerky. It doesn't feel smooth. It doesn't feel natural at all, especially if you hit the ground with your floor. And the video quality on its own, by these days standard, is nothing particularly special. The pro apps are nice, especially if you know what to do with them, if you take the time. But I mean, being fixed with one aperture and one ISO, once you hit the record button and then have slightly differentiating situations, video gets useless because I tried it. I set it all up, did it. And once I moved, the sun was completely different. And yeah, those had to be changeable in my opinion. And then you can only change the manual focus and manually you can achieve quite a lot if you want to then like i said once you record the video you can't change the camera angle anymore front video 1080p 30 and it's also too close and but the one thing the the the, the microphone was very good okay so let's summarize this whole thing once again low light pictures Pretty good, but nothing out of the ordinary, especially since you don't have a dedicated um, low light mode that can improve the photos actually really better. If you just use a normal photo at night and do it with another camera, it looks a little bit better, but those have the low light mode and can achieve something after all better. So this is the one thing. Normal, if you use the wide angle, typical wide angle camera, typical normal camera, typical zoom camera, not really a huge jump over the OnePlus, which is something that I'm still a little bit surprised by, because especially due to the hype that I saw in the review of the Sony Xperia 1 2 from someone that said it's such an amazing camera. I mean, after two years, more should happen, I guess. Also, video, pretty disappointing. Nothing special at all. The stabilization isn't great. The quality itself isn't great. Limited in terms of frame rates and so on. We don't have to talk about the front camera, but... As a whole, it's a pretty nice camera, but it's not for people who want to shoot a lot of videos. There are definitely better video cameras there on, on phones and better selfie cameras. This is pretty much just for the main cameras, if it's the wide angle, if it's the zoom, but mostly for the main camera and if you, use, if you want to take the time to use manual mode. Then it's a very good camera, but also in that regard you have more options, but the end result, I guess, won't be really much better than anyone else. So. I'm not sure why it got so much hype. It's a nice camera. It's once again, not the fastest one. It's not the most convenient one. It's not the most impressive one for sure. It is solid. And I guess that's maybe enough, but it's the end of 2020 and the OnePlus is one and a half years old. And most people don't zoom in 500 times or five times into the picture to see those minor differences. So if I would use any photo of the OnePlus 7 Pro and say it's a Sony phone, besides the colors or anything like that exposure, you wouldn't be able to tell if you would just look at the details and the sharpness and so on. But yeah, not want to get too much into that. It is a nice camera. It's a nice camera. That's pretty much it. Okay, let's finish this here. And yeah, until next time. Bye.